The Honourable Member for South Okanagan, West Kootenay. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise here this evening to expand on a question that I asked the Minister regarding the Supreme Court decision on the Redwater case, uh, a case involving the bankruptcy of Canadian resource companies and their obligations to clean up their abandoned wells and mines. This case covered both the federal responsibilities under bankruptcy law and provincial responsibilities for natural resources and the dual responsibility for both levels of government to protect our environment. In the Redwater case, the Alberta courts had ruled the trustee in the bankruptcy of a resource company could absolve itself of obligations to clean up and reclaim its inactive wells and instead give priority to paying off its creditors, the banks. So the considerable costs of cleanup and reclamation would fall to the provincial government in this case, to, to taxpayers. On January 31st, the Supreme Court reversed this decision and found that bankruptcy was not an excuse to absolve companies or their trustees of their environmental liabilities. So why is this important? Well, first of all, the issue of inactive and abandoned wells is a very large and growing problem. There are over 122,000 inactive wells across Western Canada, and most of those wells have absolutely no prospect of ever operating again. That's almost a quarter of the wells out there. Most will require cleanup and reclamation in the near future. Many are on private land, on farms, where they impact the work and lives of farmers who are no longer receiving rental payments for those wells. The cost of this reclamation work will be in the billions of dollars, and increasingly those costs are being borne by Canadian taxpayers. But this issue goes beyond abandoned oil and gas wells. The cost of cleaning up the oil sands has been estimated at over $100 billion. Who will pay for that? Now, the federal government will say that that is the problem of the Alberta government. But what of resource projects north of 60 in the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut? The Faro mine in the Yukon was abandoned 20 years ago. It's a 25-kilometer squared moonscape of toxic waste. The federal government has already spent about $300 million maintaining the site over the past 20 years and has barely begun to clean it up. It's estimated that Canadian taxpayers will have to pay another billion dollars to do that in that one mine alone. The giant mine outside Yellowknife is a similar story. Over its life, the mine spewed tons of arsenic across the landscape, and it still oozes arsenic and other toxins from the site. Remediation at the giant mine includes the freezing of arsenic waste forever, for eternity. And eternity, as Woody Allen says, is a long time, especially towards the end. The cleanup has already cost a billion dollars, and that cost will continue to go on, taxpayers paying those costs forever. So will the federal government be looking at changing federal laws regarding bankruptcy and abandoned mines and wells? When will we truly have a regulatory system in which the polluter pays instead of one where some corporations profit from reckless exploitation and let taxpayers pay for the cleanup? Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for his question because it allows me to reiterate our government's position. We just debated this subject yesterday evening at the House of Commons and our position remains the same. It couldn't be clear. No company can pollute. It can't do it during its ordinary operations near neither when it gradually reduces its activities and it can't do it when it abandons activity and it can't do it under protection. In terms of abandoned wells, we understand the interest here. This question transcends provincial jurisdiction and the federal uh, jurisdiction. That Canada's oil and gas pipelines are built securely and operate safely. That is why we put in place the Pipeline Safety Act, which came into force in June 2016, creating a culture of safety across Canada's oil and gas sector. Companies are held liable regardless of fault and are required to have the resources to respond to incidents. In addition, Madam Speaker, we continue to strengthen our pipeline safety system, including through the proposed new Canadian Energy Regulator Act. Through Bill C-69, we are ensuring projects are designed, constructed, operated, 
and decommission in a way that is safe for the public and the environment. Madam Speaker, the National Energy Board regulates interprovincial and international pipelines in the Canadian public interest. They ensure that, Can that Canada's pipelines are safe and secure. The NEB has a comprehensive compliance program for regulating facilities throughout a pipeline's life cycle and have the power required to hold companies accountable during construction, post-construction, operation and abandonment. We have confidence in the National Energy Board as a strong, independent regulator committed to maintaining the highest standards in pipeline safety. The importance of the energy sector cannot be overstated. That is why our government has taken strong, decisive action to support the competitiveness in the oil and gas sector, helping the sector enhance sustainability, thereby enabling the industry to both create the jobs we need while protecting the environment Canadians depend on. Our government will continue to work with provincial partners to ensure that companies that develop Canada's resources have the tools they need to respond in the event an incident occurs. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member for uh, Central Okanagan. Uh, some, oh, sorry. The Honourable Member for South Okanagan, uh, West Kootenay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I just want to say companies are polluting and are getting away with it, whether it's under provincial jurisdiction or federal jurisdiction, and that's what's got to change. You know, this government is very fond of saying that the economy and the environment go hand in hand, and I have to say that the saying should be you can't have a healthy economy without a healthy environment. And too often this government uses that to mean you can't take steps to protect the environment without concurrent steps that protect econ short-term economic gains that actually put the environment at risk. Natural resources are the backbone of the Canadian economy, and most resource companies act in a responsible manner and provide good jobs for Canadians and clean up after themselves. But we must have regulations in place that ensure that corporations that pollute our environment actually pay for cleaning up that pollution and that environmental protection comes first before the protection of corporate interests. Thank you. The Honourable Honor Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources. We have to take measures to make sure that companies are and remain accountable for their pipelines. We're going to continue to strengthen legislation to make sure we have a modern and efficient regulatory system. We have an independent system to make sure that the pipelines in Canada are safe. And we're also taking measures to support the competitiveness of our oil and gas sector and to help it to become lasting. And that is what Canada's, Canadians have said they want. They want a sector that works for everyone, that builds health and strong, healthy and strong communities. This sector generates jobs and protects the environment. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Cirrus Moose Mountain. Madam Speaker, I'm happy for the chance to bring to this issue back 